in Jessup. Morton Collision, quality you can see. Local news on WIFO. It's time now for a look at the latest in local news. In the news, a busy day Monday in Wayne County Superior Court Room C as a coroner's inquest was held in the shooting death of 35-year-old Jared Tyre, who was fatally shot and killed after officers responded to a domestic dispute call at 114 Briar Branch Road in Jessup back on July 21st of 2015. The purpose of the coroner's inquest is to present the evidence before a group of five jurors who were selected from the previous grand jury on a random basis, those five in court Monday to watch the videos, to hear from the GBI agents who investigated the incident and determine whether the shooting death was a suicide, an accident, a homicide, and if a homicide, whether the homicide was justifiable. The decision does not have to be unanimous, only a majority of the five have to be in agreement. Officer involved in the fatal shooting is Officer Robert Brantley. He was present, represented by his attorney, Andy Beaver. The entire family being represented by Brunswick attorney, Austin Katz. A coroner presides over the inquest, but local coroner Jay Fulton excused himself from the proceedings. So Glenn County Coroner A. Brown was on the bench overseeing the proceedings on Monday. Back on the day in question, officers were called to the Briar Branch Road in response to shots fired into a wooded area near the residence. When they arrived, they made contact with Jared Tyre and tried to persuade him to surrender his firearm. There are three separate videos, and the videos were shown in court, and it shows what transpires between Tyre and the officers. Officers in the video asked Tyre to drop his weapon over 50 times, but Tyre refuses to do so. And when he approaches Officer Brantley, you can hear the officer tell Tyre, back up, back up, back up. The tire continues to move forward towards the officer, and you can hear the shots fired and see tire fall to the ground. The five-member jury on Monday deliberated several hours after seeing all the videos and testimony and asked to see the video one, one final time and again asked a second time for the definition of justifiable homicide. After close to three hours of deliberations, the jury's ruling is as follows. They rule homicide but not justified. The jury finds the tire used verbal abuse but was not aggressive and never pointed the gun at any officer. The jury states Monday the tire's actions did not justify the use of deadly force. The jury states this is a tragedy that could have been avoided by use of non-deadly force. That was the ruling by the jury, and that ended the coroner's inquest. District Attorney Jackie Johnson says she cannot comment on a pending litigation case. Attorney Austin Katz, who represents the Tyre family after the hearing, says he will not comment on Monday, but would call and release a statement later this week. And he represents Jared Tyre's biological mother, Yvonne Gilder, and Yvonne's husband. WIFO fan will continue to follow the story as it develops. And the GBI conducted a full investigation into the shooting, ruled that the officer's ruled that the officer acted in self-defense and the officer was cleared of any wrongdoing and has been back at work for the Wayne County Sheriff's Department. But the jury of five Wayne County and see it differently and state the shooting was not justified and could have been avoided in calling it a tragedy that should have never happened. Tyre died of multiple gunshot wounds that night. A toxicology report was entered into evidence. Tyre's alcohol limit was 0.167. The legal limit is 0.08. He also had hydrocodone in his system on the night of the shooting. Once again, an all-day affair in the courthouse. Again, this appears to be headed to a civil suit as the legal investigation has been completed. Once again, the shooting death occurred back on July 21st, 2015 here in Wayne County. When we get attorney's Austin Cass statement, we'll bring it to you here on the local news. County commissioners met last night. We'll come back take a look at their meeting right after this word from our sponsor and other commercial messages. So please stay tuned. In today's financial market, it's getting more and more difficult to find a place to do your banking that doesn't make you feel like you're just another number. Altamaha Federal Credit Union is different. Different because with us, you're not just a number on an account, not just a customer. You're a member, a part of things. And as a member, you have a say in how things are run. That way, you always get the service you want and deserve. We're folks you know local folks you trust, and we're here when you need us. Come by one of our convenient locations or visit us online at altamaha.org and become a part of something great. Altamaha Federal Credit Union, Jessup, Ludowisi, and Screven. Are you thinking of selling your home or business? Hi, I'm Gloria, and as a realtor, I know that getting rid of the clutter in your home is one of the best ways to help sell your house quickly. At Jessup Premium Storage, our family-owned company provides a convenient and secure building for all of your storage needs. We now offer outdoor covered parking for that antique car, boat, or RV. 
Due to our recent expansion, we offer units that range in size from as small as a bedroom closet to as big as a one-car garage. All of our units are inside and climate controlled with 24-hour access and security. Our leases run month to month, so you're not locked into a long-term commitment, giving you the flexibility to move your belongings out the minute you purchase your new home. Stop by today or give us a call, 530-8003. That's 530-8003. Jessup Premium Storage. Be cool, clean, and secure. Wayne County Commissioners met Monday evening after a short executive session. They voted unanimously to hire local attorney Andy Beaver as their new county attorney. Andy Beaver recently opened up his own law office in downtown Jessup. Wayne County graduate and graduated University of Georgia Law School. Worked in the DA's office under Jackie Johnson for a short period before leaving there and again beginning his own practice here in Wayne County. Once again, Andy Beaver, the new county attorney, replaces long-term attorney Bob Smith, resigned from the position. Other news, after January 1st, there will be no more recreation board on a 3-2 vote with Commissioners Ralph Hickox and Kevin Copeland voting no. The issue came up under board appointments when it was time for Commissioner Wright to make an appointment to the board. As his appointment in District 2, Jason Weaver resigned from the board. Instead of making recommendations for an appointment, instead motion to do away with the board altogether. After January 1st, Wright stating they haven't met in months and there simply isn't a need for the Recreation Board. Wright says he wasn't in favor of it to begin with and it was only set up because the former commissioners didn't have the guts to fire the previous rec director. Commissioner Ralph Hickok said he disagreed. He says the people need a board to vent their problems to that they see with the Recreation Department or the Recreation Director. County Commissioner Mike Roberts disagreed with that and had these comments Monday evening. I got mixed feelings, but what I'd rather see, is that for 32 years I had a board at Farm Bureau, but I also had a, a small advisory group that helped me make decisions. I'd much rather say, see Mr. Luther and Carl just have a little small advisory board that Carl could go to about things and check back into. Not somebody, I, I don't think citizens need to be going to people voicing their disappointment in what's going on in recreation. I think they should go to Carl, and if they can't get some pleasure there, then they go see our county administrator, who's his boss. Exactly. Yeah. And if Carl wants to set him up a little advisory board, or somebody to run the errands for him and help him with things and give him some advice on how he's doing some things, that's a different situation. But I just don't think that, that we should have people going to a rec board telling them how Carl should do his job and how Mr. Luther should do his job. I just, just don't see that. And once again, those comments, uh, Commissioner Mike Roberts, once again, the vote 3-2 with Commissioners Ralph Hickox and Kevin Copeland voting no. Again, the rec board will be dissolved after January the 1st. Commissioner Copeland voted no because he said he simply wanted time to talk to his appointment and let him know the feelings of the board. But come January 1st, again, no recreation board or possible advisory board selected by the director in the future. Other board appointments, Clifford Davis and Sybil Lynn were reappointed to the Grievance Committee Board last night. The commissioner set the qualifying fees for the 2016 elections, also agreed to do away with the energy excise tax and cooperation with the IDA, but all municipalities, governments have to join on board. It was stated Monday night that Odom and Scriven have agreed to vote to do away with the energy excise tax, but the city of Jessup still has not made a final decision on that issue at this time. Under items with the administrator, Luther Smart says the farmer's market is asking the county to consider helping with funding for a new roof on the building. Total cost in the neighborhood of $18,000. The county says they'll look at their budget, but could help in other ways, such as donating county labor. The cutoff for fiscal year 2015's budget is January 20th. Luther Smart, the county administrator, says any invoice received before that will be counted in the 2015 budget, but anything after that will have to be counted in the 2016 budget. Again, the deadline is January the 20th. The board approved their consent agenda items, but took off the agenda of the item to consider and approve an ordinance to amend Section 3, Visual and Sign Recordings. WIFOFM called and talked with County Administrator Luther Smart Monday afternoon to find out what this was all about. He informed us Monday afternoon that the item was going to be taken off the agenda. Again, all public meetings are public and can be filmed during recorded period. And finally, under items with commissioners, Kevin Copeland wants to get feedback from his other commissioners on how to handle public participation. Over the years, it's been handled many ways. Copeland says he's not trying to do away with public participation, but says there needs to be set guidelines and time restraints to keep the meetings running in an orderly fashion. Again, that's a look at your county meeting, again, held Monday night at the county commissioner's meeting room. We'll come back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor and other commercial messages, so please stay tuned. In today's financial market, it's getting more and more difficult to find a place to do your banking that doesn't make you feel like you're just another number. Altima Federal Credit Union is different. Different because with us, you're not just a number on an account, not just a customer. You're a member, a part of things, 
and as a member you have a say in how things are run. That way you always get the service you want and deserve. We're folks you know, local folks you trust, and we're here when you need us. Come by one of our convenient locations or visit us online at altamaha.org and become a part of something great. Altamaha Federal Credit Union, Jessup, Ludowisi, and Screven. Stop creditor harassment today. Stop the worry of a pending repossession, garnishment, or foreclosure. Contact the Bankruptcy Group, Attorney R. Flake Cabinets, for an experienced assessment of your financial situation. They have locations in Brunswick, Hazelhurst, and now Jessup. They are a debt relief agency. They help people file for bankruptcy relief. Contact legal assistant Tanya Blanton at 912-375-5620. 375-5620 to set up your free consultation. Let the Bankruptcy Group do the worrying for you. Now serving Jessup. Hospitals, places where healing happens. They foster health and represent hope. From providing treatment and comfort to the sick to welcoming new life into the world, hospitals are mainstays in healthy, optimistic communities. Being technologically savvy and having equipment rivaling that of large hospitals, Wayne Memorial offers cutting edge procedures with world-class personalized care. Such care is provided by a team consisting of specialists driving in from larger hospital systems, as well as our local physicians we've come to know so well. Healthcare delivered locally saves a patient time, money, and the hassle of traveling out of town. We are here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You have a choice in your healthcare, and we thank you for choosing us every day. Wayne Memorial Hospital, caring for the community. Final notes of news, Wayne County Chamber of Commerce hosting a Lunch and Learn program at 11.30 a.m. on Wednesday, December 9th. That's tomorrow at the Paul Scott Polytech Center at Coastal Pines Technical College. The presenting sponsor for the event, Spoykin Steel and Crane. The Chamber is very excited to have Barry Murphy as the featured speaker. He'll discuss and answer questions about the Affordable Care Act and the significant impact of the Affordable Care Act on small businesses. If you need more information or like to register, simply call the Chamber at 427-2028. The event's for the entire community and the public's invited to attend. Registration $15 for Chamber members and $20 for non-members. We've got the winning entries into this past Saturday's Wayne County's Chamber of Commerce Christmas Parade, the theme traveling home for a Southern Christmas. Overall winner was Angelique Studio of Performing Arts. The float winner, Aiken Memorial United Methodist Church. The Walker Marcher winning entry was Gina's Gems. The school winning entry was Martha Puckett Middle School. And the car winner, 2015 Tiny Miss Martha Rawls Smith. And our congratulations to all the winning entries. And thanks to all who participated in this year's Christmas Parade. And thanks to the Chamber and his committee who spent hours upon hours putting it all together each and every year. Again, more activities planned for this Saturday in downtown Jessup, beginning Saturday with breakfast with Santa from 10 to 12 on the Chamber lawn. Also, carriage ride Saturday in downtown Jessup from 2 to 5 p.m. And kids can visit with Santa and Mrs. Claus from 3 to 5 p.m. on the Chamber lawn. So again, while you're doing your Christmas shopping, take some time and enjoy the day with Santa and Mrs. Claus and take your ride in a carriage ride in downtown Jessup. This Saturday is the Scriven Christmas Parade with the theme Load Up the Sleigh, set for 4.30 in downtown Scriven, Georgia. Santa on hand, hours beforehand taking pictures with the kids, also a car show that day. All types of events in Scriven this Saturday. If you need more information, simply call Scriven City Hall at 579-2211, the annual City of Scriven Christmas Parade. Again, the time, 4.30 p.m. At Worth United Methodist Church, along with the Wayne County Recreation Department, the Press Sentinel hosting a Hark in the Park. Thursday, December 17th at 6.30 p.m. at the Crack Williams Recreation Center. Come on out and enjoy a night of music, family, fun, and fellowship for the Christmas season. Refreshments will be served. Donations will be accepted to benefit these local charities. Tabitha's Place, Chains Crib, and the Good Samaritan Center. Again, see you in the park on Thursday, December 17th at 6.30 p.m. It's called Hark in the Park and sponsored by the Epworth United Methodist Church. December 17th at Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. at the Crack Williams Recreation Center. And Monday, December 14th, they're going to have a Sing Around the Tree at the Odom Depot featuring Monday Missions Children's Choir. Again, also the Hand Bell Quartet, Roasted Marshmallows, Open Fire, Homemade Goodies, Apple Cider, Hot Chocolate Coffee, sponsored by the Odom Garden Club. That's Monday, December 14th at the Odom Depot. The public invited to attend. And finally, the news, Wayne County High School School Council meets Tuesday, December 15th at 12 noon. The meeting will be held in the high school data room. All members are encouraged to attend. That's going to do it for latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan saying have a great day. You've been listening to local news on WIFO.
Open the doors of 182 West Cherry Street and enter the enchanting land of Linens Plus, a holiday paradise.